welcome to Moments with Marianne. I'm so delighted we're spending this time here today. We have a very inspiring show coming right up with special guest Leanne Loricella, and she's here today to talk with us about her upcoming new book, Peace, Love, Goats of Anarchy, How My Little Goats Taught Me Huge Lessons About Life. Now, Leanne knew nothing about animal sanctuary life when she left New York City for the wilds of New Jersey. She started her Instagram account, Goats of Anarchy, in 2014, shortly after getting her first two goats, Jack and Opie. With over half a million Instagram followers and many awards later, Goats of Anarchy has evolved into a nonprofit organization that teaches acceptance, inclusion, and provides special needs goats a happy and forever home. Leanne was also featured with her lovely goats in People Magazine for this month. So pick up the copy, and it's titled, Why I Gave Up Everything to Save My Goats. It's well worth the read. So let's welcome to the show, Leanne Loricella. Hello, how are you? Thanks for having me. My goodness, once I got my hand on your book, I could not put it down. I absolutely love it. <laughs> so. Thank you. That's so that's so good to hear. Um, nobody's seen it yet um, because it, it's not out. So you're you're the first feedback I'm getting. So I'm anxious to hear all about it. Oh, well, I I love how your goats have taught you that just this beautiful life lesson. Why don't you share with us a little bit how you even got connected with goats? How did that even how did those two dots get connected? Well, I was working um, in this city, in New York City, as an event planner for several years, and so I was your typical Manhattan career girl, uh, dressing in high heels every day, and, you know, that was was what my life was about, getting dressed up, going to work, going out for, you know, wine at night at nice restaurants, (laughs) and um, one day at the office, one of my coworkers mentioned factory farming and I had never really heard much about factory farming before and so I was kind of curious and on the way home that day I just searched on my phone factory farming and I was horrified by the videos and the images that I saw and the things that I read and I I went vegetarian in my car on the way home that day. And then I just started to keep um, digging more into it and and started reading more and learning more about all of the horrors of it and things that people just don't talk about and and we don't know about. It's just like this huge secret. And I just developed this huge compassion for farm animals. And I'm from Texas originally, but never grew up around farm animals. Um, We didn't really even have a lot of pets um, at home. But I just started becoming drawn to them, and I had passion for them, and I wanted to learn about them. So I got, I ended up getting married and moving out to New Jersey, um, which was just beautiful. It's not what you see on TV a lot of times. And started driving by all of these old farms and historic areas, and it's really pretty, and these cows and, and sheep, and, and see these tiny little goats in, in fields, and I... Um, was kind of just very intrigued. And so I asked my husband if we could go visit a little goat farm um, one day. And we went, and I just fell in love immediately. Um, I was just really surprised at how engaged they were with us, and they were like dogs. And I, I had never really thought about goats before. You just kind of see them out in the field, and you don't really think that they have personalities. But... Um, they wanted attention and they wanted to communicate. They wanted affection and they were silly and playful. And so I just said, I have to have goats. <laughs> and so um, I I went and got my first two baby goats, um, Jackson and Opie. And that's kind of how it started. I just, I fell in love and, and um, I was just more and more surprised um, by how dog-like they they were, and I just wanted to uh, share that with the world. Well, and you just didn't fall in love with goats. You fell in love also with goats that are special needs and ones that people, you know, you know, most of the time people wouldn't, um, wouldn't really take care of. 
So two goats turned into a hundred goats pretty quickly. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, two, two months later, after getting my first two, I got three more. And, um, and then after that, I said, you know what, the more time I spent outside, you know, working with goats and I mean, even cleaning up and doing farm chores, I loved it. I loved being outside because my, you know, previous job, I was in an office all day long, and I decided that I wanted to quit my career, and I had no plan in mind um, other than I really wanted to find something else more fulfilling to do with my life, and I knew I wanted to do something working with animals, and it was scary because I made a very good salary and uh, drove a little Mercedes and, you know, was used to being able to do whatever I wanted to do. And I went from that to making nothing and had to give up my Mercedes. And I started volunteering for um, an animal sanctuary so that I could learn. And um, then the opportunity came for me to foster a couple of really sick goats. And I fostered them and they were, you know, on death's door. And, and just through that whole process of rehabilitation, um, I just, I loved it. And they survived. They were I became a foster failure, and I couldn't give them up, so I adopted them. And um, <laughs> then, you know, I had I started my social media account, and it called Goats of Anarchy. And, you know, people started tuning in, and um, I started to get requests, you know, can you take these goats? So I, I had my first special needs goat came in, um, Lila, and she had three legs. And, you know, we went from her not walking to her running as fast as all of the boys that she was with. And then the next one came in and she had frostbite and she was missing both of her back legs. And it just, I didn't mean to get into this. Um, It happened very naturally. And when people saw the success with one or two, then they would ask me to take another one. And then it just kept growing. So we now have, I think, 34 special needs goats. Um, with various types of disabilities ranging from blind, neurological, amputees. Um, a lot of them are wearing prosthetic legs, and um, some of them are in little wheelchairs. Um, so, yeah, it just kind of happened. <laughs> <laughs> kind of took <laughs> off from there. Well, and it's so interesting where we find our purpose in life. And you talk about purpose in your book. And I was really just, it's just such a heartfelt, like your transition from where you were to following your heart, going, you know what, I need to be doing something more. I feel like there's more out there. And you really kind of took it, even though you didn't have like, I'm going from here to there, you really took it and just followed your heart, and I really applaud you for that. It was scary. Um, you know, I have never not had a job before my entire life, so to not have a job or a plan um, was scary. And, and yeah, I was just so fed up with just feeling like I was supposed to be doing something else. And, you know, I was working for someone else, making someone else money, and it wasn't – it just felt meaningless and pointless, and so – um, I, I really did. I kind of just ran with it. And, you know, I started my little Instagram account for friends and family. And then my very first day of unemployment, Instagram featured one of my photos on their homepage. And I got thirty or 40,000 followers that, that day. And that was my first day without a job. So I thought, all right, I'm on the right track. And I just, um, I just kind of, it just felt right. And so, you know, there was a lot of times that were very scary, you know, when I would move to a larger property and um, I just kept telling myself, you know, you just, you just have to go for it. You know, people that make it don't make it sitting still and being scared. <laughs> so with every step as we've grown, I just put myself out there and said, what do you have to lose? And, and it's been working out so far. Well, and you've won several awards based off the work that you're doing because it really, it is a work of the heart, you know, because I, I don't think um, people understand just how much work it is that you put in to each animal that, that um, is under your care because you have also, um, you have chickens and you have other animals that are there on your farm. We do. We have um, chickens and pigs 
sheep, um, donkey, a don a couple of donkeys, many horses. We just got a few full size horses. Um, a couple of those are blind also. We do have a lot of healthy animals. Some of them didn't start off that way, but they're healthy now. Um, but we try to kind of stick with special needs as much as we can. Um, but it is, um, yeah, it's a lot of work. I thought at my last job that I was working as hard as I have ever worked in my life until I started this. And I definitely, you know, I definitely work harder than I've ever worked, but you know, the old saying, you know, about you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I truly love what I'm doing, and I will work 24-7. I haven't had a vacation or day off in years. It's, you know, and it doesn't feel like it. Um, there's nowhere else that I would rather be than, than here doing what I'm doing. How long did it take you to learn everything about the goats and, like, the different animals that you have? Because each one has a unique um they they have unique needs, you know, so like a pig would have different needs than a goat, I would think. I mean, I'm still learning, and um, I take some crazy stuff. So my vets are still learning also. We take animals who usually would be euthanized immediately. Um, so there are, are animals that are living um, with conditions you know, a lot of animals have never lived with before. You know, we've got um, goats that are neurological. You know, we've got one goat, Finn, who's neurological, who can't stand. Um, he's very wobbly, but he rolls around in his car, and he is the happiest goat that we have here. And he's the, the greeting committee when you walk through the door. And, there, you know, the doctors even really couldn't tell us a lot about what his life would be like because, no one lets them live that way um, because it's too much work. And we're so lucky to have just such a huge um, family of volunteers and staff and people that are, are here every day working with these animals that we're, we're able to do that. But it is, um, I'm, I'm never going to be finished learning. There's, every case is completely different. And, um, you know, it's just constant, constant education yeah, I'm, I'm sure that they teach you so much. How do you feel, and you talk about this in your book, you talk about unconditional love. How do goats, and we'll stick with the goats, I know you've got a lot of other amazing animals, but how do the goats teach us about unconditional love? Well, I think that goats are more loyal than people. Um, watching them and their families and their best friends, you know, that was also surprising to me. The you know, with livestock, you know, goat, people are constantly breeding them and, and they're selling the babies off and or they're, they're slaughtering them or, um, you know, they're getting, the families are getting split, split up. We have several mothers and babies and those mothers and babies don't leave each other's side ever for the rest of their life. For life, they are glued to each other. You don't see one without the other. Um, our twins, we've got several sets of twins, are the same way. They sleep together, curled up, they nap together, they eat together, they run around together. And then goats that are paired together as babies, that's their best friend, and they think they're siblings. They're, the, the loyalty that they have and the love that they have for each other and their goat battles, if one's getting picked on, their best friend will come over and jump in. Um, and it's just, it's for life. And so it's been really awesome to watch that and and see that they are more capable of love than a lot of humans are. Well, they they teach us a lot about love and peace and compassion and as you're saying, sticking up for their buddies. And so it's easy to see why you called the book "Peace, Love, Goats of Anarchy," and I and that whole "Goats of Anarchy" for you know as it's become your brand over the years. People are just gravitating towards that, like you were talking about how when you set up your Instagram account, people were really getting involved. And I think because a lot of people didn't understand what were happening, not just to goats in general, but to special needs goats, you know, that they, they have a beautiful, healthy life outside of what people would normally consider. Well, and it's, it doesn't just end with, with goats. 
Um, one thing that was also surprising to me, you know, when I started out, all I cared about were goats and helping goats. And, you know, they evolved into special needs. But then, you know, there's been certain special needs goats that have really captured the hearts of our followers for various reasons. And I started getting messages from people, and I still do, um, who identify with a particular goat based on, you know, their disability. Um, that, you know, I've had people saying, well, I'm in a wheelchair or I have a heart condition or, you know, whatever it is, they're relating to that goat with the same issue. And they say they tune every, in every day because if that goat can do it, so can they. And they find inspiration from these little goats. So, you know, parents um, of autistic children relate to um, some of our neurological, you know, babies. And they just all find so much inspiration and comfort from these goats. And so, you know, I kind of set out to help the goats and, and was really surprised to see how much the goats were helping people. I'm yeah, I'm not surprised at all, especially I mean, like how you're saying, people can really relate to what the goats are going through and and what they might be going through at the same time because it's gotta be there there's a lot of different things that get covered within their little goat lifetime. You know, you've got if they've been separated from their families or they're going they have an issue with a disability or something neurological like you were talking about. And just how they are, it just always seems so happy. I love looking at your Instagram page because they always seem so happy no matter what's going on. We have goat drama, and I think people like to to see that. We've got battles and some fights, and then we've got couples that happen, and people love to see who's the new couple. And um, they're just like us, and it's really amazing. So I think that a lot of people are just as surprised as I was to find out wow, you know, goats are so much like, like us. And um, that's kind of what I want to show people is goats are not food. You know, they, they have every right to be here and live, you know, like we do. And especially to have their families all together if possible, kind of like they would naturally anyway, you know. Right. They're herd animals, so they would stick with their their family. And, you know, of course, we bring attention to special needs and um you know, a lot of times people will say, you know, that's cool. You shouldn't keep this goat alive. It's in a wheelchair or he's, in, you know, missing a leg. And, you know, our response is always, well, would you do that to a human? We let, you know, humans live with, with disabilities and they have perfectly great lives. So why can't a goat? And so um, there's a lot of relatability and education there. Um, so at the time... Like right now, how many animals total do you say that you have? It's probably uh, thirty five. I'm around <laughs> over a hundred, maybe a hundred and ten somewhere in that area. I lose wow. count sometimes. That is amazing. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, my goodness, I mean, my heart just goes out to you because you are definitely earning your angel wings in heaven for rescuing these animals and giving them a loving home because you can definitely see that they are well-loved through everything that I've seen. And also your books. I mean, you look at them and they're, you're, uh, they're the rock stars and the, the, the superstars of everything. They are. They're, and they're impossible not, not to love. Mm-hmm. What would be one thing you would want our listeners to take away from your book? Um, I just, you know, I, I would love for people, um, I don't know, to think more about about farm animals other than a food source. There's so much more that they have to offer and that they can teach us and that we can give to them and they can give to us. I mean, they really are my family, and um, it breaks my heart when people look at them as nothing else other than, you know, food. So I would love for people to read the book and, and you know, kind of maybe be inspired if you're not happy with your life, um, change it and take a leap of faith and, and do something that you love and it's worth the risk most of the time and um, go out and pet some goats. 
<laughs> yeah, I've, I've already threatened you that I'll come over to the park <laughs> and hug as many goats and, as possible. So yeah. That probably will happen at some point. But you should you know, definitely I, come. Goat hugs are the best. <laughs> well, and what I took away from your book is exactly that, is have the courage to follow your heart. Because it's interesting when we do that, when we follow what makes us fulfilled and what makes us, you know, we feel like, gosh, you know, instead of doing what I should be doing for a job, doing the things that make me happy, just where it ends up leading you. And so, you know, I, I really, again, applaud you for all the work that you're doing with not just the goats, but all the other great animals that you have at your farm. My goodness, you know. Thank you. Oh, you are Thank welcome. you, yeah. I mean, I, we're hoping to see some things change for animals in the future, and I'm hoping to be a part of that. Well, it all starts with discussion. Well, and if people are looking, they're going, gosh, you know what, I would, these goats are so amazingly cute. I would like to either make a donation. Can they sponsor goats? How do, or any of the animals, how does that work? Yeah, all of our um, animals do have, well, we've got a couple of new ones that don't have sponsors, but we do, each animal does get their own sponsor. Um, of course, we take donations. You could go to our website, which is goatsofanarchy.com, and there's links to pretty much everything there. And they can go ahead and and uh, make donations. They can learn about all the books that you have, sponsor an animal, schedule a visit. Oh, and I love this. And for those that have Amazon, the holidays are coming up. There's an Amazon wish list. So they can go yeah. there and kind of check that out too and see, gosh, what, what do we need to make sure the goats have, right? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I will update that list. <laughs> you can never have enough of that. Well, um, and before we go, what's the website where people can connect with you and be part of your community? Our website is, well, our website is goatsofanarchy.com, and then there is um, a link to our Instagram, our Facebook, and also there's information on volunteering. Every Saturday, um, we're not open to the public, for tours or anything like that. But for on Saturdays, we do have open volunteering. So you can get on the list. We do have a waiting list. Um, come and work and sweat a little bit and hug some goats. And we like for people to be able to come and meet them so they can see how amazing they are. But in order to do that, they have to come scoop a little poop first. So um, it's all worth it. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? Everyone's got to do a little something to kind of make the world a better place. And <laughs> exactly. It's not a bad place to start. You know? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Leanne, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show with us here today. Thanks so much for having me. And thanks for reading the book. Well, thank you, Leanne. It has been such a joy to spend this time with you and not only to talk about your upcoming book, Peace, Love, Goats of Anarchy, but also all the fabulous work you're doing at the sanctuary. Again, if you'd like to connect with Leanne and just either want to see if you can donate, sponsor a goat, or she's got many other animals. I know she just recently got a couple little pigs. Feel free to reach out to her at goatsofanarchy.com and see how you can get involved and donate. Don't forget to connect with her on Instagram and get all the updates of what's happening at the Animal Sanctuary. Well, we're at the end of our time today. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in. You've been listening to Moments with Marianne. And remember, make every moment count. In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Her guests are leaders in their fields, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, and business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in her own work. And while teaching others to develop, refocus, and grow, Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. You never know just which moment will change your life forever. 
Moments with Mary Ann airs every Thursday, Friday, and Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. Make sure to tune in and visit momentswithmarianne.com for more information.